What's up, Cubs? Welcome to episode 50 of Cheer Up, Babe. 50, 51. Should I start the recording over? No, we're hitting it. We're hitting the ground running. We're sprinting in a dead sprint like a pig race in Kansas, baby. Welcome to episode 51 of Cheer Up, Babe, the podcast. I'm your host, VJ Julio, a.k.a. Vincent James, a.k.a. Vinny, a.k.a. V, a.k.a. Papa Cub. All right, the last one you guys call me, the first two before the last one is what my wife calls me when she's trying to be cute and or she wants something. Now, dude, let's go through the bullet points. Get cozy comfy. We're going to have a fun one. We got a fun one this week. Super duper fun shit to make fun of and laugh at. Okay, so gear up for that. I need you to get cozy comfy in a hoodie, probably one that you bought from our store. Okay, if you're watching this on YouTube, maybe that's the first time you're seeing me. Hey. I'm sorry. I wish I looked better too. Okay. But that's, you know, we'll continue on. Go back to the audio if it's that rough. All right, (laughs) dude. I'm so stoked. I'm so stoked. Had a great week. Had a great week until today. Had a great week until today. Now work was great. Everything was vibing. Everybody was kind of just, you know, If some fucking star child would tell me what happened with the moon this week, still haven't got my star child. Dude, I need to have a star child on retainer that's just giving me like, so the Mercury is going to be in retrograde this week. The moon's lunar gravitational pull is going to affect the tides of the Pacific and everybody who was born in March is going to come in their sleep. So I just need someone to be on retainer for that because, dude, I had such a great week. Had such a great week until today. Let's talk about it, of course. Don't drink bang, it's bad for you. So, today's Friday. All right, so let me break it down for you. I'm recording this on Friday, and today I wasn't at work. Vincent, Papa Cub, why weren't you at work? Why weren't you there? First of all, posture up, slouching ass bitch. Okay, if you want me to tell you about it, posture up. We're loud and proud on Cheer Up Air, the podcast, especially episode 51, okay? Roll those shoulder blades back and down. Stop hunching over your desk. Also, why do you drive like that? People are going to see you, and they're going to be like, look at the cuck behind the wheel. I should be aggressive towards them. That's where the road rage comes from. It comes from you seeing other bitch-ass bitches driving on the road, okay? So posture the fuck up. Dude, this morning, okay? So I usually wake up around 5.30, in between 5.30 and 6.40, and I have to be to work at 7. So in between 5.30 to 6.40 is when I wake up. I turned my truck on this morning, okay? And I'm standing in the kitchen waiting for my truck to warm up because I live in Minnesota, and this morning it was one. One degree, okay? And it's fucking March. So hate that. But it's one degree, so I'm letting my truck warm up. While I'm standing in the kitchen waiting for my truck to warm up, I get a text. And the text is from someone who's 25 feet away from me. And the text says, I've been up all night coughing. I feel like shit. Please stay home. I won't make it through the day. So, now I'm in a conundrum. All right? I'm not the type of guy to just throw my responsibilities to the wayside without any sort of, you know, further notice, without any sort of, here's some advanced discussion about it, okay? I'm just not that type of guy. I don't like to do that. I don't like to be that guy. But when my wife texts me that she's not going to make it through the day and she's responsible for our two babies, my pride and joys, my sweet baby angel princesses, slash queens, depending on the day. Some days they have higher rank. Some days they're shitheads. But I have to I have to text in and I have to be like, look, wifey's not going to make it, okay? So if wifey's not going to make it, that means my kids aren't going to make it. That means I'm going to be familyless by the end of Friday. So I was like, all right, fuck. So I texted wife, BRB. Now you might be thinking, oh, you're going to swing to work, have a face-to-face conversation. Nope, took it as an opportunity, drove right to Starbucks, okay? Got two Ventis. One was an oat milk shake and espresso. That's for your mans. Okay, and one was an iced Americano, one pump caramel, one pump vanilla, a little bit of half and half. That's for the wifey. Okay, got two ventis, came back. I had already texted my boss and said, not going to be in today. So that responsibility conversation I was telling you about in the first place, 
Might as well ignore it because that's exactly what I did today. I left everybody high and dry. And it's fine because it can happen sometimes. Some things are more important. All right. But immediately in my mind, I go like this. Oh, so I'm going to stay home today and I just get to hang out with my babies all day. I get to just hang out with the kiddos. Maybe mama will take a few naps because she had such a rough night. Maybe, maybe I'll go get her some soup and I'll kind of take care of her because she just won't be able to manage without the kids. So after I get the coffees, I'm walking through the door and dude, so I walk through back through the door. It's probably mm, 740. Gracie's been up for like 15 minutes at this point. Charlotte is in the living room with mama and Jordan is pumping right? Because that's the morning ritual, right? When they wake up, first thing they do, mama pumps and the girls just wake wake up a little bit and they get going and then boom, breakfast time, whatever, whatever. So I, I, I walk in the door about 740, got the Starbucks in my hand and dude, I'm dancing cloud nine. Okay. I'm skippity dipping. Now, whenever Gracie hears the garage door open, she runs into the kitchen and she waits for me. And then I walk through the door and she goes, burr, because she knows my coat is cold. So she waits for me to take my coat off. She waits for me to wash my hands. And then she gives me a squeeze. And it's my favorite thing I've ever taught her. Because when I hug her, I go squeeze. And then she squeezes on my neck. And it makes me want to cry. But so that's what I do, dude. I skip in through the door this morning. And I'm like, oh, my God, I get a day with my fucking kiddos. I'm so stoked, right? So jazzed. And Gracie gives me my squeeze. I walk in the living room. I'm like, oh, and Jordan's like, oh, my gosh, you got coffee, lifesaver. I'm like, yeah, that's what I do. You know, put the team on my back. Put the entire team on my back. Here's your iced Americano. Why do you get the most boring coffee? It doesn't matter. So sit down. We're sipping our coffee. We're just getting our morning started. It rolls into breakfast and shit. And, you know, Gracie has oatmeal and sausage links. Charlotte has titty milk. And... I'm just like sitting there in the living room and I'm like, oh, it's going to be a great day. Like, holy cow, I get a three-day weekend. Like, I mean, granted, Jordan feels like shit, but I'm more focusing on the positives for me. Selfish. Selfish. But that's where my brain's at. I'm like, dude, I don't even care. Like, I'll do whatever she needs me to do to take care of these kiddos so that she can rest. Flash forward 30 minutes after breakfast. Let's skip ahead to when we took a turn for the worst, and I got real fucking pissed, okay? Sit on the couch. I'm holding Charlotte at this point. I'm holding this doll-faced, bright-eyed, just little smiling little queen, and I'm like, what a great day. And Jordan goes, so today. Now, whenever my wife starts a sentence with, so today, and then there's a dot, 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 because she's reading my facial expressions on what things should I throw at him from the jump? And should I just get right into it? She knows I'm in a great mood. She knows that I'm fucking cloud nine in it. I get to, st- I get to hang out with my family. I made the call. And I was thinking, I just get to be dad all day. Wrong. So she says, so today. And my eyebrows go, boink. And they go right up into the top of my bald ass head. They went, all the way up to the top of my bald ass head. And I was like, wow, this is about to take a drastic turn. Okay. I'm about to get angry as all fucking get out. Sure as shit. She goes, so today, the things that will just really help me. Now that's how she always prefaces it. That's how she always prefaces it when she immediately tries to get my brain on you're being a good husband, you're helping out the family, this is what she needs. She's been tricking me with this shit for 10 years, and it gets me to do things that I do not want to do. She's a mind freak, and it works. So she says, I think what'll just like be the best thing for me today is if we could get the rooms swapped. So... What that means is we have our spare bedroom, which was our office, and then we had babies, and then Charlotte needed a bedroom, so we turned it into Charlotte's nursery, and then after it was Charlotte's nursery, Jordan goes, we should have, we should have Gracie and Charlotte's rooms right next to each other, and you and I will take that room, which is the smallest fucking bedroom in the entire house, by the way. The smallest bedroom in the house. She goes, we should take that room and have Gracie and Charlotte next to each other. So we got to swap the bedrooms. Literally swap the bedrooms because all the furniture is in each bedroom set up and perfectly fine already. And we have a flow of the house and it's fine and it works. But not in her brain. We have to switch it, right? So I immediately go, there's two hours. 
you know, I immediately go, if I have to take everything out of one room, stage it in the living room, take everything out of the other room, put it into the other room, and then take the stuff out of the living room and put it into the other room and set it all up, there's two hours, okay? So that's how my brain works when I start hearing these lists. I go by time. I go by time to complete. So there's two hours out of my day of being happy-go-lucky dad, playing with the kiddos while mama rests, okay? And I go, all right, my, my jaw clenches a little bit tighter. And then she goes, and the laundry. Now, there's one thing that my wife doesn't, isn't great at, because I've told you in the past, she is a cleaning machine. She gets, she gets a little bit nervous. That's how she takes out her anxieties is she just swamp cleans our house, but she will let the laundry back up. She will let the laundry get it to where it's like we have to spend an entire fucking two days washing and folding stuff. And we're at that point right now. And she goes, and if we could just cycle through laundry, laundry like crazy, that would help too. And I was like, ah, okay, sounds good. All right. And then she goes, and also, and when she said, and also, my neck got super piping hot because... Looking for the next sorry fuck I can muscle. I went from happy-go-lucky dad to, okay, there's two hours. Oh, and I have to cycle laundry all day. And then you said, and? Looking for the next sorry fuck I can muscle. I'm looking. Looking for the next sorry fuck I can muscle. Found him, you know? And it's the demon inside my brain. So she goes, and we have to clean these couches. So there's a few more loads of laundry in my head, okay? Also, I have to Google how to clean couch cushions. Once you get the couch cushion cover off, how do you clean the actual cushion underneath? That's ba basically made out of like that Tempur-Pedic pad bullshit, you know? Remember when Gracie poured the beer on me? We had to clean the couch. And I haven't got anybody professional over to clean the couch yet. So the couches, they were gross. You know, they didn't look gross, but when you sat down, you're just like, these people are fucking alcoholics. That's what it smelled like, but it wasn't that. It was that Gracie poured a beer on my chest when I was laying on the couch. Okay? So, it granted, I mean, I should have cleaned those right away. That was my irresponsibility. But she said it third, so I'm pissed. And now... Looking for the next sorry fuck I can muscle. So, I get the list. Now, when I get lists like this, I don't know how y'all are. I have weird idiosyncrasies to where, like, if I'm going to be working, like, if I'm going to be doing stuff around the house, I have to have shoes on. I don't know what it is. Like a podcast right now, dude, I got shoes on right now. You want to know why? I'm working right now, babe. I'm on the clock. When I have to be doing shit and I'm not just lounging, if I have to stay productive, shoes go on. That's just me. And that's some weird shit that I discovered about myself about three years ago, but it works. When the shoes go on, I'm in work mode. I drink some caffeine. I put my shoes on. Time to get to work. So instead of arguing with her, I hopped to it. All right? And I did not hang out with my babies all day. I did the list. So when your wife texts you while you're standing in the kitchen and she's in the bedroom and says, please stay home. I won't make it. And then she proceeds to basically watch the kids all day while you do things around the house. Dude, <laughs> boiling lava hot. Just fucking, just, I mean, but uh, uh, it's just so mad. So I get silent. I put my shoes on. I start doing everything. I shut down for like the next two hours because I'm just in, I'm fucking Tasmanian devil in this house. And she comes up to me and she tries to snuggle hug me because she knows I'm pissed. She comes up. We cross paths in the kitchen. She wraps her arms around my neck. She's 5'3", so she's a lot shorter than me. And I'm looking down at her and I'm trying to keep the stern face on. And she looks up at me and she's smiling. And she gives me a kiss, and I was like, K. Yeah, that's what I did. I said, K. Now, you might be like, what a dick. And yeah, a little bit. But I was pissed. I was pissed. I went from, let's have a day of fatherhood and fun, to, what do you want next, miss? What would you like next for me to accomplish? Okay, so I was mad. And then she gives me a kiss, and she goes, I love you. And then the bait. The final thing, so I'm in work, I'm in fucking work mode. I'm salty, I'm martyring it. 
where I'm just like complaining about the fact that I have to do this stuff in my brain, even though I said, okay, I'll do it. I'm just martyring it. So I'm making it become a problem in my brain as I'm doing it. And I'm just, you know, I'm being a fucking guy about it. I'm crossing paths in the living room at one point. I'm carrying one part of the bed frame from one end of the fucking house to the other, moving it through the, to the next bedroom. And as I'm moving it, she goes, Gracie, don't you just have the best daddy? Don't use the kids. You use the kids. And the reason that it makes me mad right now that she used the kids is because in the moment it works. Because here's the deal. That's all I want my kids to see me as the best dad. So if she throws that out there, even though the Gracie can't comprehend what she's saying, doesn't mean shit to her, meant shit to me. Suddenly, I'm happily doing chores. I mean, my wife is a fucking mind ninja, and she's just got me figured out, okay? So I'm fucking angrily going back and forth just cleaning shit, and my wife can just drop a line, and then she can get me to chuckle, and then I look at her with the apologetic eyes like, <laughs> okay, I'm really not that mad. And then she smiles at me like, I am what I am, I'm a hooligan. So she wins, dude. The, the point of that is that she fucking wins, all right? She always wins. And the fucking worst part about it is that by the end of it, I'm happy that the stuff got done. What? What's wrong with men, you know? Why are we this way? Honestly, what I think it comes down to is it just, I, it was like my expectation versus reality. And it wasn't great today. It didn't line up. And when things don't line up, dude, I'm such a like one step at a time type of guy. Like I had to, she gave me like five things to do and I had to write a checklist. That's me. Because if it's on paper, I can get it done. And that's just some weird shit. But whatever. I mean, okay, I move on. I mean, because I'm not even that fucking mad about it. Everything's done and I'm happy. But this is just me venting because here's one thing I can't do. Tell her that that pissed me off so bad because if I tell her that that pissed me off so bad then that's going to lead into a stupid argument where she's going to be like okay just don't do it but then she's going to be huffing and puffing and dude I'd so much rather be huffing and puffing than her huffing and puffing because I'm not going to huff and puff and blow the blow the house down she's going to huff and puff and it's going to destroy the block okay picking your battles all right this is marriage counseling via a microphone via a guy wearing a backwards hat and a crew cut sweater that he sells online and talking into a microphone. This is marriage counseling 101. So fellas, just fucking do it. Okay? Just do it. Dude, just so you guys know, next week we're going to have a fucking podcast about alpha male podcast because that's something that I discovered this week that I was like, holy shit, before I actually talk about it on the podcast. I feel like Cheer Up Babe is the antithesis to all these fucking alpha male podcasts because I want to get so many clips and tips and tricks from these fucking guys and we're just going to roast them. So look forward to that in episode 52. That's going to be the entire fucking thing. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'll give you a brief fucking preview that these guys, it's like the guys that are like, hello and welcome to the male brain, male mindset podcast. I'm your host. Terrence. Nah, I shouldn't say Terrence because we got a boy named Terrence and that's who we fucking rep for. Uh, I'm your boy. Uh, any other fucking T name in the English language. That's me. And one thing that you need to know about women is they don't want you to tell you your feelings. They want you to bottle it up, get mad, and then when you display that aggression, when you display those physical boisterous tones she's gonna get so wet bro that's basically every single one of those podcasts and we're gonna talk about it next week and it's gonna be super fun this week now i wanted to talk i don't it's tough because we don't talk about politics on this podcast right but there's a huge i mean we know about the horrible things that are happening right now right it's all over everywhere it's it's terrifying and sad and heartbreaking and everything, the this, this stuff going on in Ukraine. Now, we don't talk about politics on this podcast. We don't talk about, we don't talk about foreign affairs, okay? But one thing that we can talk about is uh, some cool things that are happening in, in the shadows of this, like, sad darkness, right? Like... Okay, so obviously, we, if, you, if you haven't been up to date on the whole Ukraine thing, I mean, 
I'm not your guy to update you, but we know that there's like a war going on right now. It's horrible and it's stupid and Putin is a piece of shit. We'll get to him later. But the, what it does do is it gives opportunity for like really great stories to come out. Like I heard about the fucking ghost of Kiev. Now, even if it's fake, okay, there's some things that are saying Eve that it's fake. And I go, well, is it? You know, there was a few like video clips, like the ghost of Kiev. If you don't know who the ghost of Kiev is, it's a fucking fighter pilot that was in a fighter jet that went six and oh on the day in like fucking February 24th or some shit like that. Like when Russia invaded the Ukraine and then they got to Kiev, some motherfucking bad bitch hopped up in his fucking fighter jet and took out six fucking Russian fighter jets. And I mean, here's the deal, dude. Even if it's fake... That's positive propaganda for those people. So how is it a bad thing? It's not. It's a good thing. It's a good thing because all people need is just a little bit of hope. They just need a little bit of hope. I mean, we we in our fucking, in, in the United States, I feel like, okay, I shouldn't say that because I know everyone has crazy different experiences, drastically different from mine. I feel like I'm right in the middle where I don't really have any hardship, but I, you know, I'm not a fucking one percenter or whatever. So I should be careful with my words. Me personally, I know that I have not gone through anything super duper difficult or traumatic like these people are going through in the Ukraine right now, right? Nor have I lived a life that they've lived start to finish, okay? I know that. So I'm not saying that hope is gonna win the fucking day. Let's be realistic. You have to have bad mother fuckers in order to pull yourself out of these type of situations you have to have just the most savage crazy people that are willing to band together to try and fucking come out on top of this whole situation because it's such a back against the wall outnumbered bullshit situation that i hate it but coming from my shoes i don't have any sort of perspective on how you could do that I don't have any I don't have any advice. I don't have any solutions. I don't and I'm never going to pretend to because guess what? Drastically different life than anything going on over there. I know my place is what I'm saying. I know that the one of the main reasons we don't talk about politics on this podcast is because guess what? It's not my life. So why would I speak on it? Why would I speak on horrors and traumas and these tribulations that these people are going through right now when I'm not experiencing it. When I'm having good weeks and the worst thing that happened in my week is that my wife made me do house chores. Do you get the perspective? You feel what I'm saying on the perspective? Why would I pretend? Now, let's circle that directly into the worst thing I've ever seen on the internet and I watched Two Girls, One Cup. Okay, let's circle that straight into the antithesis of that entire fucking description of the people that think that they're going to solve the problem from their glass house. The people that are sitting there in their ivory tower and they go, I have a fucking idea. And I'm a celebrity, so it holds note. Dude, if you don't know what I'm talking about, you better strap the fuck in. This video went so fucking viral because of its ridiculousness, like two weeks ago. It might have been, wait, when was this? This was post, this one that we're going to watch was posted. Fucking can't find it, doesn't matter, don't know how to look up dates. Dude, Anna Lynn McCord. Now, that's not a first name, middle name, last name. That's a first name, Anna Lynn. Apparently, she was a star on 90210. Never seen it. Doesn't matter. You just know that she's an actress. And then you see her and you go, oh, she's super pretty. This is going to be horrible. Okay? Now, we're going to break it down start to finish. We're going to talk about it. What she did is she wrote a letter to Vladimir Putin. Whoops, just to start off, real quick before we even get into it, if we talk about what's the baseline, she wrote a letter to Vladimir Putin. Whoops, whoops, immediately shouldn't have done that, immediately shouldn't have done that. And, the, and it's titled, Dear Putin, comma, if I was your mother, dot, 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 
Oh, dude, if you haven't seen it, it's so bad. It's so bad. It's the worst. Do you remember when all the celebrities got together when all the riots and all the crazy shit was going down and and then we had a pandemic and everybody was on lockdown and all the celebrities got together and they go, we can all solve this problem by doing a horrible cover of Imagine. Remember when Wonder Woman set that one up? You remember when she was like, hey, rich friends that have never gone through any trials? We should sing... I can just imagine this is worse than that, okay? This is worse than one guy, one jar, okay? And if you don't know what these videos are, they're, they traumatize my middle school years. So, dude, Anna Lynn McCord wrote a letter to Vladimir Putin, and I'll just tell you, she has all the answers. She solved it. She solved it. So let's get into this. And I'm just going to let her talk. Actually, that's bullshit. I'm definitely going to jump in immediately because I have so much commentary on this. 90210 star, Annalyn McCord. Letter to Vladimir Putin. Dear President Vladimir Putin, I'm so sorry that I was not your mother. Just don't beat around the book. Just getting right fucking to it. Just getting right fucking to it. Just don't apologize to Vladimir Putin from the jump. First of all, let's just say never say sorry, Vladimir, you know. Also, never ever say anything that says dear President Vladimir Putin. Because guess what? He don't give a shit. <laughs> he also can't understand you, okay? He also can't understand you. Dear President Vladimir Putin, I'm so sorry that I was not your mother. If I was your mother, you would have been so loved. Held in the arms of joyous light. Never would the story's plight. Oh, Shakespeare. Dude, Shakespeare blaming Vladimir Putin's mom out of the get-go. How about... How about we don't do that ever again? How about we never blame a dictator's mom for him being a horrible piece of shit, murderous son of a bitch, you know? How about we don't immediately go... You look at Vladimir Putin and you go, God, his mom really fucked that up. Why are you blaming her? What does she do? You know, fucking, it's like, that's like, that's legitimately like you look at fucking, I don't know, any serial killer ever. Okay. I almost just said Jason Voorhees and that would have been the worst example of all time because it literally was his mom. That's probably why it popped in my head. That's the one example where it was like, that's hundred percent his mom's fault. Okay. So let's let Shakespeare take it away. Also, when you rhyme it, it makes it so much worse. It's so prepared. Also, I want to set the scene. If you can't see it, she's just sitting in her living room talking to her camera. She's just She's just sitting in her living room. The world unfurled before our eyes, a pure demise of nations sitting peaceful under a night sky. If also, when you do the Shakespearean shit, okay, it makes it less clear of a message, okay? It makes you look obviously so fucking pretentious, it's unbelievable. And then also, my, I'm like, aside from just saying that you would have held him more, and he wouldn't have invaded the Ukraine. Instead of just saying what you want to say, you had to make it Shakespearean. And here's the deal. I'm pretty sure in the Shakespeare era, there was like incest and just tons of murder and just sick fucks that like wanted to bang their moms and shit. This is worse. If I was your mother. The world would have been warm. So much laughter and joy and nothing would harm. I can't imagine the stain, the souls. I can't imagine who would sit down and write it and then memorize it and then recite it on camera and then post it. You know, you can't imagine how cold Vladimir's childhood was. I can't imagine being you. Stealing pain that the little boy you must have seen and believed and the formulation of thought quickly taught that you lived in a cruel, unjust world. Dude. <laughs> okay. You want to know why this kills me? One of two things, okay? One, either you just have the most overinflated sense of ego that you're like, I can solve this problem. 
or you're so delusional that you think that a world leader like Vladimir Putin would be completely different if his mom was nicer. Like, talk about talk about taking your perspective and being like, everyone has wine on Tuesdays, right? Everyone has brunch on Wednesdays. People's, people's hardest part of their day is that they sp spend an extra 40 minutes in traffic while they sit in the backseat that their driver is driving them around. Everyone has those same experiences. Everyone's worst part of their day is when the nail lady fucks up their fingernails, you know? And then, like, the whole vibe of this is she was sitting around with her friends and they were drinking wine. And then they got on the topic of, like, the Ukraine. And they don't have a sense on how fucking evil people can actually be or what an actual hardship is. And they go, it's, you know, this could seriously all have been solved if he would have just had a better childhood. If his mom would have just fucking loved him a little bit more, we would have no wars. That's what this is. The, and, that, and that's fine. That happens, you know, probably basically the entire state of California has this entire fucking discussion. And, or at least all the rich people there do. And then it's just the end of it. Because hopefully in the back of their brain, they're going, maybe I'm being silly and we're looking at it through our rose-colored glasses. She goes, I went to college for theater. <laughs> I recited Shakespeare on stage. I'm going to write him a poem. And then I'm going to post it. He's for sure going to see it because I'm Annalyn McCord. I was a star in 90210. And then once he sees it, my guess, if I had to guess, he's going to reach out to me. And I'm going to be able to talk to him. Maybe we could even sit down and have a brunch. And we're going to get all this ironed out. Because he's going to feel my genuine love that I have for every individual soul. And he's going to see that the world's not full of hate. Problem solved. Where's my camera? Is this why you now decide no one will get the best of you? Mm. Is this why you do not hide nor away shy from taking back the world? It was it because so early in life, all that strife wrapped your little body with fear. This is the girl. This is this is the vibe of a woman. Sorry, I shouldn't say woman. I should just say person because you know that there's fucking cuck ass fucking dudes out here that are would do this shit in a heartbeat. All right, who do this shit in a fucking heartbeat, basically all of them. So this is the vibe of the girl that the kids throw in a fit in the, in the grocery store. And she goes, sweetheart, honey bear, what do you need? Talk to me, speak with me, speak to me through your heart, you know, or they get like a, a scraped knee and they rush them to the hospital. That's this vibe. If I was your mother, if the, the world was cold, I'd have died to make you warm. Oh, hold me back tears. I'd have died to protect you from the unjust, the violence, the terror, the uncertainty. I would have died to give you life. Oh. My goal is that my daughters grow up and beat the shit out of kids that are raised by people like this. Okay, I said it. I'm sorry. I said it. I said it. That's one of those things that that was that gut feeling and I couldn't put it into words until right then and that was the words and those might be fucking rude words but that's the bottom line that's the real deal when my daughters are older I hope that they you know get the upper hand on kids that are raised by people like this because here's the deal kids that are raised by people with this perspective are not going to go out into the real world with any sort of preparation. Okay. They're going to go they're going to go out into the world and be like all I got to do is make people warm. And it's like no. There's fucked up people out there that are going to try to get the best of you. There is. And if that catches you off guard, you're living in your mom's fucking house for the rest of your life and that's exactly what's going to happen. Dear Mr. President Putin. Oh, if only I'd been your mother. Mm. Perhaps the torture of unwritten youth would not within your heart imbue a scription. What the fuck does imbue mean? Just use normal words, okay? Putin can't understand normal English, let alone Shakespearean English. 
just such fealty against that world that you thought was so cruel. Dude, if if Putin saw this and he had to have his translator translate it, the translator would be like this. I do not know. Putin would be like, what did she say? And he'd be like, I do not know. She speak bullshit. She speak words backwards. I do not know what he said. I do not know what she say. She's saying something about she want to be your mother. And Putin goes, what is this, like a sex thing? And he goes, I literally can't make heads or tails of it. Perhaps you would hold dear human life. And on this night, instead of Mother Russia, you would call me. Oh, fuck. <laughs> so here's the deal. I only watched the first minute. <laughs> oh, fuck. That's the worst part. I only watched the first minute because that's all I could stomach at the time. I was fucking cringe laughing. I was going like, oh, oh, stop. Just fucking don't ever, as we know on Cheer Up Babe the Podcast, don't ever turn your front-facing camera on, okay? If you're an actor or an actress and you get told what to say on screen, don't ever turn your front-facing camera on. You have a thought, you say, the general public should hear this from my thine own mouth, okay? I'm trying to follow. I'm trying to speak in terms that you'll understand. Thine own mouth. They shouldn't just, oh, you have an idea. You pull that camera out. The second you open that camera and that lens pops up and you see your face on the camera, go, oops, click, lock your phone, set it down, slide it away from you. No front facing cameras for celebrities. That's the rules. Those are the rules. I don't make them. I just let you know what they are. Your human life. And on this night, instead of Mother Russia, you would call me. Mm. And I would set your mind quite free with the love that only a mother can give and only a mother can take away. Sinister twist. When holds, she doesn't harm at bay and leaves her boy for the promise of a man. Whatever your story, Mr. President Putin, I can't imagine how it feels in your heart, but I know if I was your mother, that would be a start. Oh, Dr. Seuss now. Okay, okay. Making, so, oh, so many twists and turns, okay? So basically, let me just break down exactly um, the entire point of her two minute and 43 second poem. Memorized it. Had wine night with the girls. Thought about the discussion. Sat down, wrote it, memorized it, filmed it. Probably did multiple takes and then posted it. So what the entire poem says is, I think... That if I was President Putin's mom, I would have loved him enough that he wouldn't have wanted to rule Russia. End of poem. Finn. You know, it's just done. It's just done right there. I, so you can you can hear why I stopped watching it early. Like, and I'm not going to lie, we're one minute and 59 seconds into her poem and we have another 44 seconds so fast at math i'm so fast at math and i'm struggling but we're gonna try to push through we're gonna see what if at the end she goes ha, ha, fucking psych he's a piece of shit she'd be my favorite person on the planet if she had wrote down and memorized two minutes and 30 seconds and then the last 13 seconds were her being like fucking psych could you imagine if i actually posted that she'd be my favorite person of all time she would sucker everybody in but i guarantee that's not what happens towards the awareness of what a powerful being of light you could be if your mind was only free from the violence you've seen when you were just two or three. I oh, two or three, Dr. Seuss again. Dr. Seuss again. Okay, quick side note. Dr. Seuss books for toddlers suck because right now Gracie's in the fucking learning phase where she's like, she knows her animals and she knows the sounds. And then you open a Dr. Seuss book and she does, what is this? And it's a fucking snuffle up, I guess. And I'm like, it's a fucking snuffle up, I guess. And she goes, what is this? And I go, throw the Dr. Seuss books away. Okay, let's go back to bears. I cannot believe I was born too late. Oh, so Got so, got so passionate. She goes, okay, I'm trailing off a little bit. I'm definitely acting like I'm reading from a script. So I need to pick up the passion. Come on, Anna Lynn McCord. This is her talking to herself. Come on, Anna Lynn. You remember 
your classes. You've been on the big screen. We need more passion from you. She's self-directing at this point. From the violence you see when you were just two or three. I cannot believe I was born too late in a different place when I would have loved you so. Watched you play wherever you go. Oh, it's my great God. to see you here. Thank God that cut off. I was, I was folding inside of my body. Dude, could you imagine? Could you imagine seeing horrible things on the, uh, just this, it's crazy. It's crazy. Like, listen, I'll be the first one to admit that I'm a pretty fucking cocky guy and I have a pretty decently inflated ego, just like about myself. I call it self-confidence, whatever. I f I'm just comfortable with who I am, but I'm also, you know, a little more self-reflective. Could you just imagine being the type of person that would post this? It just hurts. It just hurts your soul. It just hurts inside every orifice of my body. I've never had more secondhand embarrassment for a person. I can just imagine. I will watch that video a thousand fucking times before I would listen to that. Now, here's the worst part about it, dude. Here's the part that I feel a little bit bad about. This is the... This is the me maturing a little bit part where I feel kind of bad for people like this because we all make mistakes, you know. We all do dumb shit. We don't post it for the world and it goes viral, but we make mistakes. And uh, the reason that I feel a little bit bad is she posted it. It went viral. People started roasting her and then she took it down. But too late. Once it's on the internet, it's there forever. People have the proof, okay? People have what your belief system is if you put it out there. It hurts me. All right. Now I feel bad. I don't want to roast too bad. <laughs> I say that after we just talked about it for like 25 minutes. But listen, Anna Lynn, you fucking blamed his mom. Okay. You didn't say, you know what it was that made this so bad. You didn't say a single bad thing about him. You said you had a bad mom. If I was your mom, no more wars. You're the worst. <laughs> I'm sorry. You're the worst. Okay. Dude, I hope. Oh, fuck. Okay. We're done. I'm done. I'm done talking about her. I'm... Well, probably not. She'll definitely flash back up. But dude, that was so fucking painful. I can't even fucking explain it. That was so bad. That was so bad. By the way, just fucking roasting. His... What does Putin's mom look like? What does... Putin's mom look like. Okay. Um, based off of the images that popped up on the search, not great. All right. Oh, dude, you got... <laughs> Hold on. Annalyn McCord is an amateur compared to Vera Putina. That's the first thing. That if you type in what does Putin's mom look like, the first thing on Google is... a thing by slate.com that goes Annalyn McCord is an amateur compared to Vera Putina which you know All right, and then you open the picture and it's rough it looks rough out there okay hold on oh dude we have a fucking article right up also my the goddamn heater in my house just kicked on. So if you hear that, and I, I'm really, really sorry. On Thursday, 90210 Reboot Actress. Oh, it was 90210 The Reboot. My bad. <laughs> reboot Actress Turned Activist. Of course. Annalyn McCord became the day's designated internet laughing stock for lamenting on a video she posted online that she was not Russian's, <laughs> Russian President Vladimir Putin's mother. Yeah, dude. See, she was getting roasted a lot. There were several strange elements to the situation, not least... A D-list actress suggestion that all the world's horrors might be solved by better mothering. But stranger still be this. McCord is not the first woman to publicly profess delusions of being Putin's mother. I mean, damn, Putin. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. He should get no adulation. But everybody want to be this guy's mom, I guess. You see, there is or was a woman in Georgia named Vera Putina who claimed who has claimed since 1999 that Putin is her son. Putina was born in 1926. Oh dude, this is perfect for hold on. This is a perfect we're going to learn random fucking facts real fast. So, obviously, we have to do the 
First of all, baby doll, I don't even fucking know. We're going to learn about women trying to be Vladimir Putin's mom, apparently. I know, and I'm sorry that we're talking about it, but this is what we're talking about. Let's learn something today. Official biographies have always identified Putin's parents as Navy servicemen, servicemen Vladimir Wow Spiridonovich, Putin and factory worker. Oh, sorry. Vladimir Spiridonovich Putin and factory worker Maria Ivanova. You know what this reminds me of? This reminds me of the uh, the character off of Dodgeball. The, uh, you know, when he's like, when the Globo Gym Purple Cobras step up into the bar and he's like, allow me to introduce you to the team that will be winning the National Dodgeball Tournament. Allow me to introduce Blade, Laser. Taser, Blazer, and all of and you, you of course know my fitness consigliere Michelle. But allow me to introduce. I'm fucking it up. But allow me to introduce Fran Delavaskovinsky. Now they said that as a spoof, but that's how the names are because Vladimir Putin's mom is named Mary or Maria Ivanovanda Putina. Ni Shalomova. I mean, holy fucking shit. That name's worse than the fake name they used in Dodgeball, okay? But Vera Putina told The Telegraph in 2008 that she had a son who she sent to live with his grandparents in Russia in 1960 when he was 10, after which she believes he was adopted by the couple that Putin has publicly presented as his parents. According to Vera Putina, who said she called her son the nickname Vova as a child, his father was a Russian mechanic who was married to another woman at the time he got Putina pregnant. Oh, just fucking slinging dicks. She claimed that she didn't see her son between age 10 and years later in 1999 when she spotted him on television. Although Putin was actually born in 1952, Putina had... Holy shit, Putin's 70, dude? Putin's 70? Just riding shirtless on horses? That's fucking weird. Putina had an explanation for that. In Russia, he had to repeat a few grades because he couldn't speak Russian. She told Georgian television reporters that's why they changed his year of birth. Okay, so... And then that lady looks like... Any sort of person that you would put in a horror movie, like one that would be standing at the bottom of stairs or one that would be standing in an open cornfield, and it just looks fucking terrifying. Okay? She looks terrifying, and if she told me that she's Putin's mom, I'll tell you one thing that I'm doing, going, cool. Absolutely. I agree 110%. I completely believe you. Please stop looking at me with your soulless eyes. Okay? If you want to know what I'm talking about, there. Yikes. Okay, so I guess everybody thinks that they could solve uh, all of Russia's hardships if they just had been the one who pushed Putin out of their vagina. Dude, that's such a weird concept. Okay, such a weird concept. Let's do some unqualified dad advice, though. Let's brighten, let's fucking, let's get off of Anna Lynn McCord's high horse and let's get on our high horse and give random strangers advice on the internet. <laughs> All right, so it's time for a little bit of unqualified dad advice. Let's just hop right into it. As always, COVID-19 posts and comments are no longer allowed on the subreddit. We are on the normal advice column on Reddit, and we're going to do this damn thing. All right, so first we are going to scroll stop post by the last taco. I think my husband fat shamed me. Let's do it. Let's put on the husband hat, and let's just get right down to the nitty gritty. The title is kind of rough. Good morning. Well, okay. Hi, good morning. I am 23 weeks pregnant, and this morning at 10 a.m., I wanted McDonald's lunch. Yes, it was early, but I wanted fries and a soft serve ice cream cone. I mean, yeah, baby gorgeous, you're 23 weeks pregnant. 20, 23, what is that, six months? Just under six months? Yeah, you're full swing. I mean, I'm not 23 months pregnant, and I want McDonald's lunch at 10 o'clock in the morning too, okay? My husband takes me, and we arrive at 10.20. He gets breakfast and pulls through and eats the parking lot while we wait. He gets breakfast and pulls through and eats in the parking lot while we wait for McDonald's breakfast to turn to lunch at 10.30 a.m. Oh, wow, this had a whole fucking sequence of events it had to do. I was wondering at first why she was <laughs> being so specific with the times. 10 a.m., I want a McDonald's lunch. 10.20, okay, so McDonald's doesn't serve lunch till 
They pull into the parking lot. And while he eats, I mean, you couldn't have just waited it out with her, bro. Okay. Or maybe ran and grabbed some coffee before he hit. Regardless. Regardless. So they wait for McDonald's breakfast to turn to lunch at 1030 a.m. We're talking and I tell him I want fries and an ice cream, maybe a coffee. He immediately says no ice cream this early in the morning. If you eat that, you're going to end up like your mama. Oh, uh, you, oh, you said what, dude? Oh, you said the top sin of a husband to say. Word for word, worst thing you could ever tell your wife, okay? Because here's the thing. That sentence, it's never going to come out of a husband's mouth in a positive tone. It's only going to mean negative connotations. Even if you think the highest of your mother-in-law, you're going to say it in a negative tone because, let's be honest, every woman fears that... No, I shouldn't say every woman. I got to stop doing broad generalizations like that. going to get me in trouble. But... Women fear turning into their mom, you know, because we start to see our parents for like bad stuff that they are too. You don't want to be an all encompassing embodiment of your parents. You know, you want to be your own person, maybe take the good parts. But if you say you're going to end up just like your mom, you for sure are talking about it in the negative sense. And that's bad. That's the, oh dude, that's fucking strike number one, two and three simultaneously. Okay. No ice cream this early in the morning. If you eat like that, you're going to end up like your mom. Ugh. My mom is a hefty woman. No less beautiful, just obese. My eyes start to fill with tears. And he says, I'm just worried about our son outrunning you and you not being able to get him. But if you turn into your mom, I will leave you. There's strikes two and three. What the fuck? I don't care how beaten down and exhausted of a day I'm going to have. I would never tell my 23-week pregnant wife who's holding my baby that she's that she a can't have ice cream. Dude, when she's pregnant and she's growing your child, she can have whatever she wants. Now, granted, it's not like McDonald's is the healthiest option. You'd want to, like, feed the baby good shit. But if homegirl wants McDonald's at 10, she's going to get it. I don't give a fuck. I don't care. You want to know why? She's growing a human being. There's a human being. As the husband, that's, that's up to her to decide. Really. That's up to her to decide. How fucking, how shitty she needs to eat one day in order to curb her cravings that are through the fucking roof. I want a fucking ice cream. I'm going to go to get a McDonald's ice cream right now. Just because. Just because it got brought up. But she has... Dude, I can't believe you fucking said that. Your husband said, you're going to turn out just like your mom. And then he said, I don't want our son to be able to outrun you. Fuck off, dude. And then if you get fat, I'll leave you. Here's the thing. Okay, there are... There's for sure like standards that different relationships uphold. You know, some things are important to people that aren't important to others, but the conversation does not s happen when your wife is 23 weeks pregnant. When your wife is 23 weeks pregnant, you're a butler. And you know what butlers don't do? Fat shame their fucking bosses. Okay? Holy shit, dude. Welcome to husbanding 101. Is your wife pregnant? Yes, that's the only thing you get to say for nine to 10 months. Yes. Can we? Yes. Can I? Yes. Should we? Yes. Want to? Yes. Okay. Holy fucking shit. You don't fucking threaten her that you're going to leave her if she gets too fat. You fucking idiot. Spoke my piece on that. Wow. Okay. But if you turn into your mom, I will leave you. Mind you, I already am overweight and have been most of my life. I'm in no way skinny, especially now with a baby bump. Babe, you're six months pregnant. It's not called a baby bump. You're pregnant. Listen, you don't have to fucking size it down and call it a baby bump. You're six months pregnant. You're going to be bigger. You're going you're gonna to gain weight. That's, how, that's what happens. Holy shit. You're so fucking afraid of being overweight because of your husband that you're calling your six-month pregnant baby a baby bump. I mean, babe. Ugh. So many red flags. Waving them up. 
I lost my spot. Okay. I'm in no way spinny. I'm in no way skinny, especially now with a baby bump. I started to cry and asked to go home. He then went through the McDonald's drive through and ordered exactly what I wanted previously. But at this point, I didn't want to eat anymore. We get my order. He hands me the ice cream and says, eat it. I immediately start to cry and say, no, I'm embarrassed. He made me eat the food before he took me home. I don't know how to feel. Fucking goddamn captain. Fucking what's it called? What gaslight captain fucking gaslight here. Old Jerry gaslights over here. What kind of fucking psychological manipulation is this? Dude, this has the entire era of when you would like punch your little brother in the fucking arm and then you realize you punched him too hard and he would start to cry and you go, no, 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 no. I'm sorry. Punch me back. What an immature little bitch blankie of a fucking dude. Okay. I mean, cuck. And then so. Oh, okay. So you realize you stepped over a line. So then you fucking force her to embarrass herself and make her eat the food that you shamed her for in the beginning. Go fuck yourself. Gonna be a horrible dad. Jesus. This is the type of guy that when he has a son, his son grows up and joins a frat. That's all I'm saying. And everyone fucking hates him. Dude, I mean... What's the advice? What do you want to know? Because that was... Oh, sorry, 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 sorry. I, did, I didn't read the last sentence. He made me eat the food before he took me home. I don't know how to feel. I'm really upset. What do I do? I mean, fucking send his ass to therapy. I don't fucking know. You're... I mean, it's so deep into the relationship. You guys are having a baby. And then you're... I don't know. Regardless of whatever he fucking says, he... Your standard for yourself shouldn't be held by what your fucking husband thinks because obviously he's thinking like a fucking child. Jordan, Jordan would mention things to me about her weight and I would always, I would always downplay it on purpose. Like I would downplay it, not like downplay like what she's feeling or her emotions. I would downplay the importance of what she's feeling. I would always say like, yeah, babe, you're pregnant or yeah, babe, you just had a baby. Like, of course, of course. I wouldn't expect anything, you know? I wouldn't expect any sort of bodily thing to be going on with you right now. I wouldn't expect you to, like, look the best you've ever looked. I wouldn't expect you to look half as good as you've ever looked because guess what? How you look right now is what I'm seeing after I watched you grow our baby and then give birth to our baby. That's what I watched. And now this body that you're in right now is fucking... 10 times hotter than the fucking body that when we met because I've seen what this body has given us. Like, that's how it should fucking be. Not, you better not get fat like your fucking mom or I'll leave you. By the way, I understand you're six months pregnant with our fucking kid, but I just thought I'd throw this out there in a fucking McDonald's drive through You fucking piece of shit. You know what it is, dude? He's... A fucking guy that doesn't have his priorities in order and he just, he, he's fucking selfish. It's just a fucking tiny little lens that he's looking through and it's his own fucking lens. He's not big picturing it. If you big picture the situation, like look what this woman is fucking sacrificing for us. Look what this woman is fucking sacrificing for me. You want to be selfish about it. Make it about yourself. Look what this woman is doing to her body for you. You want to be a dad? Congratulations. This fucking woman has to put herself through this to fucking, in order to give you that. And then you're going to say you can't have ice cream. And if you turn out fat like your mom, I'm leaving you. What a fucking bitch. My advice, super glue his dick to his belly button in his sleep. That's my advice. That's my advice. And then when he wakes up and his dick is super glued to his belly button and he's having a panic attack, be like, if you can't get the super glue off your dick in the next 30 minutes, I'm leaving you. I have expectations. I have standards. Jesus fucking Christ. I don't even... Sorry. Sorry. Swearing. Swearing way too much. But that one... That one gets me... Be that one gets me red hot, dude. Just insecure fucking dudes. Ugh. God damn. Okay. Scroll. Stop. This... Okay. Title of this one just says, Help. Well, are you at the bottom of a well? Let me grab a rope. From... <laughs> Ball sack. <laughs> Took me a second because it's B-A-1-1-S-A-Q. But it's ball sack. 
Backstory. So the guy I'm talking to slash dating is two years older than me. Uh, wait, so this is a girl? I mean, I shouldn't assume it's a girl. Maybe it's a fucking... Hold on. Does it say? Okay, so I'm going to assume that this is from a young girl. Backstory. So the guy I'm talking to slash dating is two years older than me. I'm 13 turning 14. And he's 16. Okay. Instead of just clicking off, I'm going to put my dad hat on. This is Gracie. I'm going to put my dad hat on. This is Charlotte. I'm going to put my dad hat on. These are my girls. And they're 13, turning 14. And apparently the guy that's involved in this is 16 already, from a dad's perspective. Don't like it. But let's see. Let's push on. I'm only saying this because I think that's a big reason he talks to me. He constantly asks for nudes. Nope. That's it. I have my dad hat on. Hey. Teenage boys are fucking perverts. Okay? And they only want one thing ever. And the only thing that... I mean, dude, I'm just going to say it. When you're a fucking teenage boy, you don't pick a girl because of her qualities. You don't. When you're fucking, especially when you're when you're talking about 14 years old, ew, what the fuck, okay? Don't send nudes to any boy if you're under 20. I'm going to say that. I'm going to say that. Don't send nudes to any boy if you're under 20. That's the end of the fucking sentence and because all boys under 20 only want the nudes. Actually, that's not even fucking true. I'm just like going crazy with it. She's saying no. And I jumped ahead in my brain because I have my dad hat on and now I'm pissed. Now I'm pissed that this guy's even fucking asking for nudes in the first place. You're 13. Okay. No. No. And, and if you say no and he still asks, that is showing you that he only wants one thing. He doesn't respect you and he doesn't respect your decisions. Oh my God, dude. I just got a fucking hot flash through my chest thinking about having the sexual discussion with my kids. Oh, fuck. Okay. I'm really going to have to figure this out in the next fucking 13 years to have this fucking discussion with my girls. Okay. I'm only saying this because I think that's a big reason he talks to me. He constantly asks for nudes, and when I say no, it feels like I disappointed him. Basically, every conversation, every conversation ends up with sexting. He's very kind sometimes, though, but it honestly feels like he doesn't care about me, even though he says he loves me and stuff like that. All right, babe. So no 16-year-old boy is capable of love, especially when it's all surrounded by a sexual atmosphere. He's just being a dipshit, and he thinks that since you're younger, he, he, doesn't, he might not even have this consciously in his brain, but he thinks that since you're younger, he can get the upper hand on you, and you're a little more naive to the situation of how big a deal it is to send nudes to somebody, okay? And if you've said no, all it takes is you saying no once. If he asks again, that's the end of the discussion because he doesn't respect who you are as a person, okay? That's what I'm going to tell my daughters, and then I'm going to find out what his name is, and I'm going to go to his house, and then I'm going to ask to see him. His dad is going to answer the door. And I'm going to ask to see him. And I'm going to ask them both to step out into the foyer. We need to have a private discussion. And then as they step out, I'm going to say the discussion. And the dad is going to turn to the son and be like, you're asking for nudes? That's absolutely disrespectful and out of the question. We don't do that stuff in this house. And then his dad's going to turn to me and he's going to say, hey, sorry about that. We got, it. We got this problem fixed. And I say, what are you going to do to discipline him? And he's going to say, well... I'll probably ground him, and I'll go, all right, just so I can pound the message home. I'm then going to physically beat the fuck out of his dad in front of him, and every time I hit him, I'm going to look at him and say, this is your fault, all right? You want to play mind games with my daughter and say that you fucking love her and try to be all fucking manipulative in order to get her to sext you? I'm going to play fucking mind games with you, and every time I punch your fucking dad in the jaw, I'm going to make direct eye contact with you and tell you that it's your fault. All right? Head game for a head game, babe. Wow. Maybe I should take off the dad hat because, dude, I feel so much testosterone coursing through my body right now. <laughs> Holy fucking shit. Okay. 
Yesterday, I finally told him that I didn't like our relationship because it feels like I'm some kind of toy he can play with when he's horny and that it feels like he's using me. I didn't tell him before because I didn't want to be annoying. His response was, if you think I'm using you, why don't you stop talking to me? Plus, you never initiate a conversation. What he said kind of hurt because it felt like I didn't mean anything to him. I answered, I don't want to leave you. I love you. I just want to let you know that I have huge attachment problems. It's really, oh, this is a parenthesis. Sorry, this is for us. In parentheses, she says, I just want to let you know that I have huge attachment problems. It's really hard for me to get friends and stuff like that. But when I get close to someone, it's really hard for me to let go. Okay, that's normal. He does also have a point. I don't initiate conversations. So I want to know if it's my fault that our relationship looks like this. And if that's the case, what can you do to fix it? Also, parentheses, I've already unadded him twice, but my mental health dropped back to zero and I felt like killing myself. Okay, so one thing that the younger generation needs to understand is that sadness and emotions are normal to feel and you don't need to look for a way out. You need to look for a way through. There's all of these things that we experience, sadness, grief, fucking regret you feel like a piece of shit everyone feels that dude it needs to be so normalized that we can actually feel all these fucking emotions and learn how to be better on the back end of them experience them feel how much they hurt because they really fucking hurt but the more that you feel those things the more that you learn from them and the more that you learn about yourself and you learn what gets you out of funks and you learn what certain things set you off what sort of triggers you have all that shit right not this like jump to like, oh, I'm sad, so I'm going to fucking kill myself shit. This like, I don't know why that's like the culture right now, but it seems to be the culture. Like all I know is when my girls are feeling depressed and sad, I'm going to let them know like this is normal and it's important. And then I'm going to tell them why. I'm going to tell them why it's so important to feel those emotions. Because damn, that's so fucking sad that all these kids just jump to that where it's like, ah, oh, it's like. I don't know. It, it, it feels like kids these days, God damn, I sound so old. Kids these days don't understand the concept of this is not forever. Nothing is forever. Everything constantly changes. Everything constantly, you got the good comes with the bad and the bad will also come with good too. So it's like we got to fucking work on teaching our kids that I think. But in this situation, uh, Listen, babe, he is a fucking manipulative 16-year-old piece of shit. You, you, ha you have your answer, you know. You said, what was the line you said? What he said kind of hurt me because I felt like I didn't mean anything to him. If a guy ever makes you feel like that, goodbye. Because no guy should ever make you feel like that. And that's the end. That's the end of it. Goodbye. Cut him off. Get yourself through it. You will be fine. Lean on... Uh, a different support system, okay? Also, Jesus Christ, dude, the fucking fact that n nudes are flying around at 13, mm-mm, mm-mm, stresses me out, stresses me out. I'm gonna teach my daughters jujitsu, I think. Like that, you know, I was raised, I was raised in combat sports, combat sports, makes it sound so cool. I wrestled, like, a, for my entire fucking life, and, um, I, so I always thought I would have sons and then it would be like, oh, we'll be a fucking wrestling family. It'll be great. But then I had daughters and it's like wrestling is mainly a guy sport. If my good daughters want to wrestle by all fucking means, I'm going to put them in. But I think it's important that they learn some sort of fighting skill or defensive skill because nothing gives you self-confidence like understanding that in a room full of people, you have the ability to uh, protect yourself and handle business if you have to. You know what I'm saying? And I want my daughters to feel that. So I'm probably going to put my daughters into jujitsu so that when fucking little pieces of shit, 16 year olds are making my daughter feel small and she's using words and the words aren't getting through, she'll just fucking triangle choke that bitch. And when he wakes up on his foyer next to his dad, that's face is fucking punched in. They can come to their senses together. Dude, so fired up right now. Got to pull it back. So fired up right now. Next one, scroll, stop. Improved my life, but now I'm not sure about it. By uh, Fran Delavach Stavish Stavarovinsky. 
Might as well be. A few years ago, I really hated where I was in life. I was working a shitty food delivery job in a shitty apartment. I spent all my money on drugs and going out and drinking. I spent all my free time playing video games and watching TV. I didn't like where I was. I didn't like where I was where I was anymore or my lack or direction, so I started taking all the advice there was and trying to better my situation. Awesome. I now work a better job trying to save money and pay off debt. Awesome. Trying to build more healthy habits that I've been working so hard on and technically doing way better in life. Dot, dot, dot. Okay. Dot, dot, dotted it. Made it feel like here comes the twist. But the problem is, I hate it. My new job pays well, but I end up working 50 plus hours a week and I'm on my feet most of the time. Have been lifting or doing cardio five days a week, eating healthy, all that. Going for a walk, hike. If I don't work out, I'm always worn out and sore and tired from work and then working out. I'm getting involved in hobbies other than video games and doing drugs. I always like basketball, so I'm putting myself out there and playing in a rec league. I like being outdoors, so I try to volunteer every other Saturday at a nature center near me. These things are good, and I guess these things are good, I guess, but they just contribute to the exhaustion. I have stopped playing video games except for rare occasions. I try to read a chapter a day instead. I stay at home and work out. Then I try to get a good sleep. Jesus Christ, are you fucking? Did you watch a couple Gary V YouTube videos, dude? Just a complete fucking turn switch around. I stay at home and work out, then try to get a good night's sleep instead of going out and drinking. Apparently, most of the people I considered my friends were actually just fellow addicts like me and weren't interested in any non-drinking or drug-using activities, so that sucks as well. I just am wondering when the improvement comes. I'm not feeling better like I thought I would. In fact, I feel worse. I sit here on Friday night sore, reading my stupid book, and finding myself wishing I was back partying or drinking beer and shooting pool or hanging with my old friends, vegging out, ordering some wings or pizza. Looking back, I thought my life sucked before but now I'm not sure. I just wonder what the point of trying to do all this work is if I don't feel any better. I feel worse. I think I was way happier before when I didn't care. Okay, now let's attack this from multiple angles. One thing that you have to have, regardless if you're, you know, you lived both both sides. You lived the fucking veg out lazy piece of shit where you feel like you are a waste of space in your own head, right? You've lived to that. And then now you are living the hyper productive, constantly going guy. Regardless of what side you're on, you need a decompression in your day. You need a period where it is just you chilling and your central nervous system and your fucking biorhythms get to just chill the fuck out. Just chill the fuck out. And the common misconception is that it has to be like with the fucking video games or whatever. Like every, all the improvements you're making are great. You know, you're going to feel better over time. Like as your body catches up with the amount of working out that you're doing now and all this shit. But here's the thing right now, you're always ramped at a thousand. Your body all day went from doing fucking nothing to now you're just ramped at a thousand. So what's happening is your central nervous system is fucking frying. You're not letting your brain rest and recover. Now, it says you're trying to sleep good. Cool. But I'm talking about an actual wake moment where you need to reset yourself. For me, okay, new dad and shit. So I wake up. I go to work. I work out at lunch. I go back to work. I drink an energy drink on the way home because I know when I walk through those fucking doors, I'm fucking dadding it up until 8.30. I hang out with my wife from 8.30 to 9.30. She goes to bed. Then I take an hour or two to do whatever the fuck I want to do. If that's read a book, cool. If that's fucking watch Netflix, cool. If that's come into my studio and record a podcast, cool. But it's a decompression point where my brain's not spinning or thinking about the next thing that I have on my docket or thinking about the next thing I have to take care of for the day. I'm doing nothing but just existing in that moment, and that moment is a waste of time. People underestimate the power of wasting time. We need to, I feel like, as human beings, or else we get burnt out. That's all you're feeling right now is burnout. You need to allow yourself a reset button. And I'm talking about every fucking day, dude. Almost every fucking day I have a decompression at some point throughout the day where I'm just like, this hour or two is mine. Is mine. And, you know, some shit like, you know, grace you. 
might wake up. Charlotte, you know, will need a, another bottle prepared, something like that. But I'm still going to take that time after the fact. I'm going to get up. I'm going to take care of what I need to take care of, but I'm going to still take that time after the fact. Because especially like if you're anything like me, I'm at a thousand all day. I'm at a thousand twenty four fucking seven. So if I don't take that decompression time, I burn out by Tuesday. It's happened on multiple occasions. I burn out on Tuesday through the week. <laughs> okay. You're just burnt out. If anything, I would say take three days off. Like if you're so fucking fried right now, take three days off, three days off of working out. You know, maybe have a, a cheat meal here and there, but don't fall into the trap because here's the thing. That's going to feel really good, but that feeling really good is just your reset button. It's not your new lifestyle. It's not a new fucking thing that not, well, since this feels so good, I'm just going to do this now. No, what it is, is it's allowing that burnout to subside and then you can get back to it because all this, all the changes you made and all the moves you did were great. You're going to be so much of a better person because of it you just can't do it all day every fucking day you can't do anything all day every fucking day you can't be a lazy piece of shit all day every fucking day or else you'll accomplish nothing and you can't go fucking guns blazing ramped to a thousand all day every day because you're gonna fucking burn out and then you're just gonna quit so you gotta allow yourself to decompress i would say take a few fucking rest days have a few have a few cheat meals and enjoy yourself all right Hope that helped. And holy shit, we're at an hour and 18 minutes. Okay, so that was Cheer Up Babe, the podcast, episode 51. And I hope you guys had a good time. I mean, hey, Annalyn McCord, is that her? Was, was that it? Annalyn? First of all, turn off the front facing camera, slide it away. You don't need it. You don't need it. Okay, I went way too fucking hard on her. That's for sure. But so did everybody in the world, and I'm just a fucking follower today, dude. Sorry. I am what I am. I'm a hooligan. I mean, it is what it is. <laughs> it is what it is. Sometimes when people on the internet post stupid shit, and then I see it, I go, oh, God, got to tell the Cubs, and it's going to get gnarly. Baby, you're going to have a great fucking Monday, okay? You are. It's going to be beautiful. You're going to have a great fucking week, believe it or not, okay? Let's keep things in perspective. Let's know what our lanes are. Let's know what our life experiences allow us to speak on, what our life experiences don't have any sort of grandiose self-importance pieces of yourself, okay? Now, that's coming from me, a guy talking into a podcast, or talking into a microphone, has his own fucking podcast where he's solo. I mean, that's coming from me, okay? <laughs> this is the most hypocritical sometimes, and it's okay, because my heart's in the right place, I tell myself. All right, babe? Have a great week. All right. If you want to uh, support the podcast, you can go to cheerupbabe.com. We have awesome merch there. If you... Uh, or you want to leave a review? Cool. You can subscribe to the YouTube. You can leave a comment, like a video, do all that shit. It helps out. And uh, if you don't want to do any of that fucking shit and you want to just randomly listen to episodes here and there, I love you all the fucking same. All right, let's get out of the den. Let's go start this fucking week. Go out there. Don't be a bummer. And cheer up, babe.